Our grade 12, let's talk about the nested if in our second tutorial video. The nested if is dif different or differs from a simple if in, in one major area. If I just call up a, an if function here, okay, just a normal boring if function with nothing in it yet. And I said to you, right, a simple if function said, there's a logical test. Let's say um, you ran a race and the logical test was, did you finish the race? Yes. So if the person finished the race, if it's true, give them a medal. If it's false, don't give them a medal. But what if the logical test was, how long did you take to finish the race? Okay. So if you finish the race in less than 10 minutes, you get a gold medal. That's great. So if the, if the race was less than 10 minutes that you finished it, your, your time, your finishing time, um, if it's true, you get a gold medal. But what if you finished it in less than 12 minutes, you get a silver medal. But then what if you finished it in less than 15 minutes, you get a bronze medal. Ah, hang on, you finished it in less than 20 minutes, then at least you're going to get a, um, a, a chocolate or whatever. So the nested if differs from the simple if in the, in the mere fact of the logical test, if, if the logical test stays the same, the value if it's true stays the same, but the value if it's false could be more than one thing. Here's a brilliant example that I love to use. It's in school marks. It's in, it's in your module 4.2. And it's a whole lot of people's test marks and their percentages here. And we know from Western our things that we use, um, our percentages go from uh, if it's 80 or more, it's an A. If it's 70 or more, it's a B. If it's 60 or more, it's a C. If it's 50 or more, it's a D. If it's um, 40 or more, it's a uh, E and if it's 30 or more, it's an F, and then, of course, double F for anything between 0 and 29, which none of you will get because you're going to work hard and you're going to watch these videos. Okay, so there's some motivation. All right, so what if, now, you can't just say if a person gets 80% for cat, it's an A, What? and then everybody else gets a what? Everybody else gets something different depending on the mark you got. So the logical test in this case would be that that person or that mark, if that mark, for example, if that mark is greater than 80, greater than equal to 80, guys, it's important that you know this, greater than equal to 80, remember in any if function, you always test the, log the, the highest value first, you test the greater than equal to 80, if it's true, give them an A. Now, there comes the fun part, if it's not an A, but it's greater than equal to 70, then it's a B. If it's not a B, but it's greater than equal to 60, it's a C. If not, but it's greater than or equal to 50, it's a D. If not, but it's greater than or equal to 40, then it's an E. If not, but it's greater than or equal to 30, then it's an F. And for everything else between 0 and 29, basically you're saying um, it's a double F. So in that false value here, you are going to do six F functions, actually five plus uh, um, another little one. You're going to do five to six if functions in that fold. I know it sounds like, like a hell of a story, but it's not. If you just follow the pattern and you can now pause this video, go back and see what I, I actually wouldn't mind you do that. Pause it now, go back and hear what I've been saying to you. You know how I work. I haven't got a whiteboard yet, but I like to explain the theory of this thing, how it works in theory before you even see it on a piece of, on, on, a, on a computer. Understand the theory of the difference between a simple if and a nested if. There's no function called nested if. You can't go in here and go and say, Where's, where does it say nested if? It's an if function with other fun more if functions nested inside there. Okay? So what is it? The logical test, one thing happens if it's true, and many things can happen if it's false. Then it's nested. Here's a classic, classic example. Now I've done this function because I didn't want to spend 10 minutes on this video talking nonsense. I've already done this function for you. And if I click there, that's what it looks like. And I know it looks a bit ominous, but relax. Okay, I'm going to take you through it. Logical test is greater than or equal to 80. If it's an um, if that's true, it's an A. If not, now look what it says here. If G3 is greater than or equal to 80, then it's an A. Hunky dory. If not, now we're working down here. If not, but G3 is greater than or equal to 70, then it's a B. And you notice that the B's, the C's, the D's, the E's, the, and all of those are in inverted commas ah, on the laser. Okay, get the awesome powers reference um, because they are text, they're not numbers. And every one is greater than or equal to 70. Every time you type that, you just separate it with commas. So you go, right, 
Um, if G3 is greater than or equal to 80, then it's an A. Let's forget about that. Let's start here. But if not, but it's greater than or equal to 70, comma, then it's a B, comma. If not, you open a new if function. Remember, you only use the equal sign once, so don't use the equal sign. If not, but it's greater than or equal to 60, then it's a C. If not, but it's greater than or equal to 50, then it's a D. If not, but it's greater than or equal to 40. Remember, you're not testing a range. You're testing that same cell all the time, G3, G3, G3. Greater than or equal to 30, then it's an F. Then what you have to do for the last one, you don't have to go and say, if not, but it's greater than or equal to naught, then it's a double F. You just have to say for everything else. So you've nested one, two, three, four, five F functions, plus you've said it there, comma, double F means, and everything else. So anything that we haven't covered here will be a double F. So people, I need you to go back and you need to, to look at what I've done. And the, the best thing I can tell you about a nested F is that to make it easier, notice the pattern. Whatever you've done here, whatever you've done in that part of the function, okay, there, you're doing exactly the same thing, exactly the same thing. If, if G3 is greater than or equal to um, 80, it's an A. Look at what you've done here. You are now going, if G3 is greater than or equal to 70, it's a B. Equal to 60, it's a C. So you're doing that exact same function there, 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 and there. All you are doing is changing the value and the symbol, the value and the symbol, 80A, 70B, 60C, 50D, 40E, uh, 30F, and double F for everything else. So you are actually, all you have to do is when you're doing the function, it's going to look, okay, what is that first one? I must do exactly the same if function, but I'm just changing the value and I'm changing the symbol. So when you say, okay, it's hunky-dory, hunky 100% right. If I just drag it down to show you, there's somebody with an A, there's somebody with a C, with a B. This, the only way you're going to be able to do this is to take this function step by step, take the steps that I've been telling you now, work through them, and then pause the video or go back, rewind, and do it over and over and over. And I hope you first of all understand the concept of what a nested if does. What is the difference between a nested if and a uh, simple if, and how do I do it? You now need to go and do this. You need to physically go and open this, this activity. Um, if it's got the thing there already, delete it, please, because often they come with the symbols in there. Delete that thing, please, and then try it for yourself. Don't be a copycat. Try it for yourself. Go and talk yourself through it. I do that. I've been teaching for so many years, and I still check myself, and I keep on, I, rip, I talk loud, and I, I sit down, and I talk to myself, and I say, okay, do the first, that first part is very easy. Now, the trick is just to make sure that you've got the commas in the right place, the inverted commas for all symbols. Obviously, if those were numbers, you wouldn't need inverted commas. And that you know that after each if, you open a bracket. Each if, open a bracket, etc., etc. So please rewind, rewind, rewind and see what I've done. Um, if you are, are really struggling and you need some more information or there's something that you can't get right, please email me. Please email me. Um, Ysmith uh, at westringhigh.co.za Email me with your questions. I promise you I'll get straight back to you. Um, and just try it, though. Try it over and over and over. And, and the most, Im most important thing is please don't learn it like a parrot. Don't learn this thing like a parrot. Go and understand what is a simple if, what is a nested if, and what does this thing tell us. Um, remember, again, in summary, a nested if is used if the possible, here we go, if the possible false value has more than one option, like, a silver medal, a gold medal, sorry, a, silver, a gold medal if you won, or you do it in, in the least amount of time, or a silver medal, a bronze medal, a plastic medal, a chocolate medal, a sand medal, I don't know, whatever you like medal, so participation certificate. So understand the concept of what is going in there. Don't, don't try and do this function like a palette because it's not going to be the one you get in any exam. Understand the concept of, of ifs and nested ifs, please. Use this activity in school marks. And uh, let me know if you've got any problems. And tomorrow I'm going to do, or sorry, not tomorrow, but the next video I'm doing with you is going to be the VLOOKUP, which does exactly the same as the nested if, but it doesn't have this long thing here. It works in a table. But I, I don't want to do that until you've got this. And if you want to pop me a little email comment to say, hey, ma'am, I got that. Thank you. Or, hey, ma'am, no. Um, can you explain this? Or I can do it except for this. Please do. Why, Smith, at westringeye.co.za. I forgot there for a minute. Thanks, guys. Um, take care. Stay safe. Stay at home.